Hello? Yo, dude. What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, yeah, just listening to some Night Fell, thinking of some ideas about what video to make. I should do some pre-90s death metal shit? That sounds like a fucking plan. US only? Fucking A. Oh, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be listening to Oregon's Night Fell Darkness Evermore. It says members of Tragedy. Fucking phenomenal release on 20 bucks spin. Cannot recommend this enough, especially if you're a fan of like His Heroes Gone. But like, mix His Heroes Gone with like black metal elements and like some doomy stuff, and that's pretty much what you get out of this. This is so fucking good. But today, I would like to talk about the big three. And what do I mean by the big three? I'm talking pre-90s death metal. Now, I could go on and on and list bands like Deceased, Necrophagia, Ripping Corpse, uh, fucking Slaughter, like, the, the other Slaughter, not, not the hair metal Slaughter. The Slaughter that once had Chuck in it, and, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna go into those real underground, underground bands. Like, at, here, here in Philadelphia, we have Gorephobia as well, like, who were, you know, making recordings, like their first seven inch, I think, on here is from 1990, which means they were making demos probably years before that, and it's fucking awesome. Like, seriously, if you wanna dive down the, the proto-death metal, like, rabbit hole, you will find some cool ass fucking bands like and there's a lot of bands that share names with shitty bands like there's two poisons there's two slaughters like shit like that uh there's another samhain like all sorts of like back then it didn't you know it didn't really matter because these bands didn't expect to get signed to record labels so like once you know possessed came up with the term death metal in 1985 there's been arguments ever since of who made the first real full-length death metal record and a lot of people will tell you different answers and it's weird that this type of history is not a hundred percent conclusive at this point in time but if it is I haven't done my research honestly since I first read Choosing Death in 2004, I think. So I might be wrong here, but I remember having tons of arguments about what the first real death metal record was. A lot of people were saying, you know, Morbid Angels, Abominations of Desolation. But in my opinion, I'm gonna have to go with Death Scream Bloody Gore, but also this is one of the best death metal albums of all time. I mean, yeah, Leprosy is more death metal sounding. This is more thrashy, but holy fucking shit. Every song on here is amazing. It's just a classic record for every reason you would think it would be. Like, everything about this rules, like, Cheers to Relapse for, you know, putting these out again now. Please put out some Atheist again. I know you guys have the record rights or so, or uh, Season of Mist does. I would love to have Unquestionable Presence by Atheist in my hands. Cause, and Peace of Time by Atheist, like another just amazing record. I forget what year that came out. It might have been 89, it might have been 90, I forget. But let's just talk a little bit about Scream Bloody Gore here. Here's just some pictures of Chuck Schillinger himself. Rest in peace, dude. And then him and Chris. Chris went on to form Autopsy, which I will get into. But if you pick up any of these relapse uh, reissues, some of the money goes to the Sweet Relief Music Fund, which helps out, you know, people that get sick that are in bands and whatnot. And again, this is just a phenomenal 
one of my favorite death lineups, even though it's just two dudes, two of the best dudes in death metal. Like seriously, Chris and Chuck together, it's just unbelievable. Like, and there's this awesome letter to Chuck from fucking Max Cavalera from Sepultura. Just, there's so much history behind Scream Bloody Gore that it's just, you know, impossible to talk about death metal and not, you know, go into this album, like, to ignore, like, the fact that this came out in 1987, you can't do that, like, that's what I mean by, like, when I say, like, you know, to me, this is the first death metal album, I mean, yeah, like, 1987, like, fuck yeah, I mean, tons of bands were making demos, but in my opinion, you know, this just is actual death metal and still holds up today like it's just a testament to how fucking awesome death metal is like as an underground genre and type of music like man like even all that like like possessed seven churches and stuff like and like if you listen to some of like deceased demos they're fucking phenomenal and it's a bummer that like some bands kind of got left behind while others like rose to you know where i'm gonna go next and that's gonna be morbid angel this is altars of madness we all know how fucking amazing this is and this dropped in 1989 but they had another full length before this abominations of desolation with uh, the dude from Nocturnus on vocals and drums, I think, as well. I'm not sure if Pete had joined the band or not. But this lineup of Dave Vincent, Trey Asgaroth, Richard Brunel, and Pete Sandora. Sorry if I, I said Pete's last name wrong. But, like, so fucking good. Everything about Altars of Madness, which just turned 28 fucking years old. Again, this record holds up to the sands of time like it seriously is a tool of not only nostalgia but fucking awesomeness everything about this rules some dan seagraves portal of fucking just death metal because again to me this is just you know a lot of people the vocals are more like a black metal style compared to Blessed be the sick, but everything else about this, pure fucking Florida death metal. And this opened up the floodgates to more sound studios and uh, fucking people with Scott Burns and everything. The whole Tampa, Florida, like, holy shit, man. And Amon. DSI'd, like, holy shit, I could just go on and on, but these are the really, really stand out, popular, you know, early death metal recordings, proto-death, whatever you want to fucking call it, it's just death metal, and it's fucking amazing, I love Morbid Angel, and it just never gets old, like, Seriously, never, ever, ever have I once been like, ah, I don't want to listen to Altars of Madness. If I could listen to Altars of Madness all fucking day, I would. Like, literally, like, but this is just such an important record. And so far as well, Earache Records from the UK released this, but Combat, I'm pretty sure, did the first death uh, release. For Scream Bloody Gore. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But Combat was based out of New York, which was awesome, you know? Like, I, I can't imagine back then how great it must have felt, you know, to go from like tape trading, you know, just these THX little cassettes and whatnot to actually trading like your band's finished fucking recording. Anyone that's actually been in a band knows how great of a feeling it is to get the finished product of your like hard work in like you know cd form anything any type of format when you get to listen to your finished your finished record it's great 
But last up, we're going to go with Autopsy, Severed Survival from 1989 as well. This features Chris, who was on Death Screen Bloody Gore. So it's no surprise to me that when he formed Autopsy, they just absolutely released right here probably one of my absolute favorite albums ever all three of these are just complete classics you have the hellraiser artwork here and just in case you love the other alternative slash censored artwork here's those fucking evil surgeons here and this release uh, it's just wow like even to this day the bass tone on here is unfuckable like it seriously it's so goddamn heavy and filthy it's just yeah like nothing fucking comes close to it and this was real big back in the um late 80s early 90s and hell even today bands making these black and white collages of their you know Pretty much just having good times when it comes to autopsy, smoking some bongs, listening to death metal, and you know, I reek of putrefaction. Like, I'm trying to only stick to American old school death metal right now. So, don't be saying, like, hey, you didn't talk about Bolt Thrower. That shit is a completely different video. I should have even mentioned it. I actually forgot to, but. This is American death metal, so I'm, I should have said that at first, but I did not, so I apologize. I'm just checking something real quick. Yeah, this was recorded in January 1989, which means all these demos were done well before this. So that's, excuse me, fucking sick, but again, you have Everybody, you have the band thanking like King Fowey from Deceased, Hex, Ross and Immolation, Carcass, Mutilated, Ex Mortis, Revelant, Nihilist, Pestilence, another tri tribulation, uh, gen Genocide, which is fucking repulsion. Like, hell yeah. I, I, there's so much to get into and. Repulsion is more on the grind side of things, so again, not mentioning Repulsion, but I should, slash Genocide, so I'll throw that out there, but this is just, you know, something, again, it just never gets old, like, something about, like, this music, it, it, it really is, as, as corny as it might sound, it's magical, it's a tool to take you back to a time where, you know, it wasn't so easy to even come across an autopsy record, let alone fucking bitch about it if you want a certain, like, color or something and can't get it. Like, people back in the day were just dying to just be able to hear this in any way possible. It could be a tape that was dubbed over 86 times. It didn't matter, just as long as the tunes got into your brain and you fucking enjoyed them. And, you know, infernal hails to Chris, like, and he's held Autopsy down since their comeback after the ever so disappointing shit fun album. Let's just not talk about it, but it's pretty much Autopsy's Cold Lake. If you don't know what Cold Lake is, just look it up. Uh, it involves one of the, another classic band that is pretty much responsible for all of this when it comes down to it alongside of early Slayer, Possessed, etc. But you all know who that is. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I just thought it was kind of, you know, awesome that, you know, people were still making such killer tunes such early in, you know, the history of the genre. And that's just sick. And we've been listening to Nightfell, Darkness Evermore. Killer fucking album blackened crust just killer stuff cannot recommend this enough on 20 bucks spin they also have an ep available but yeah thanks for watching thanks for fucking supporting and you know just keep it fucking brutal stay deaf keep watching and you know keep fucking banging your head in
Cheers. <laughs>